So over the last week or so, I've been trying to come up with my own little launch system. Uh, the basic reason for it is I, I've had the Estes launcher, um, it, which is nice, cheap, inexpensive, and it fits in your pocket. It's really easy to carry around, but you can't really launch the larger rockets off it. They need to have um, uh, a lot of higher amperage and higher voltage to get those copper head igniters going. Uh, but the disadvantage of that is you have to carry around a large... 12-volt uh, DC battery like this gel cell here or you've got to connect it to your car so you have to have your car nearby which is hard out in the middle of a field um, so anyway uh, I wanted to get the best of both worlds and try to be able to have something that I could toggle in between um, internal power and external power and so I'm going to show you in the next video what, what how it all works and um, exactly what each little component of the of the launcher system does. I thought I'd start with a basic explanation of how the controller works and then I'll explain this little mini schematic here. First I've got a little arming toggle, arming toggle button. It's your safety switch basically. And when you flick that, this is a continuity check light. It tells you whether or not you have a good, a good circuit going between uh, the controller and your igniter. If something were wrong with your igniter or one of the clips came off, that light would not go on. Um, and then you've got your momentary switch, which when you press it allows the full amperage to go through to the, uh, um, to the little igniter and the light will go off while it's happening and it'll make the, the igniter glow. Um, this little switch here is how you toggle between your battery terminal leads for external power, so it says 12 volts external, and the internal 9 volt power when you flick it when you flick the switch to the on position it completes the circuit for the 9 volt and allows it to power everything and when it's flipped off it break, basically breaks the circuit to the 9 volts so that you can plug in the 12 volts without harming those 9 volts and power it that way. So the circuit, the basic idea here and first off I didn't use traditional schematic drawing to make it a little easier for uh, those of you who are like me and don't have a whole lot of uh, experience with electronics. So. Uh, I've got a picture of the banana plug receptacle in the back left there, positive. It's going to have a wire coming from it to one side of your momentary switch. And uh, on that same side, you're going to take another wire going to the little 12 volts DC light. On the other side of the light, you'll take a wire back to your momentary switch. Um, however, on that same side of the 12 volt light, uh, you're going to have a wire coming over here to one side of your safety toggle switch, which is this guy. And on the other side of the safety toggle, there will be a wire going directly to one of the igniter lead receptacles. On the other receptacle for the igniters, the, you're going to take one lead over to the negative lead of your battery terminal. And that is your basic 12 volt circuit. You could leave it at that if you don't care to have internal power. If you do want to have internal power and add this little switch in the mix, it's pretty simple. All I did here is take um, two 9 volts in series, which means to connect the positives and the negatives of the battery. It treats it like one battery. It basically gives you still 9 volts, but double the amperage to travel through longer wires. So you're going to have a wire coming from the positive side to the switch, and from the other end of the switch to the positive on your battery. doesn't matter which one, just pick one positive. And then pick one of the negatives to take a wire directly to the negative battery terminal. So in effect, when it's switched on, you have 9 volt power switched off. Um, it takes this out of the mix. You can put um, your battery terminals um, on your uh, 12 volt battery to supply power. Now, this system has a couple advantages over buying something like the Aerotech Interlock Controller. Uh, the first one is that you can customize it to any size and shape you want. Um, and with the interlock controller, you're also going to have to uh, spend about $50, $60, $70 dollars just to get the controller without a battery. Um, whereas this might cost you $20 to $30. Bucks. Um, and the other cool thing is you can make the option of having internal power with this so you don't have to lug around that huge 12 volt battery all the time. The other cool thing is you can customize the buttons as well. If you were to add another momentary switch and a light, you could create another circuit, um, or another separate circuit by uh, um, do, following this here where you connect one side of the toggle to the light and one side to the, you know, the momentary switch and so on and so forth. 
and what would happen is when you flick the toggle it would arm all of those however many switches and lights you have but you could fire them off separately and so you could have three or four rockets ready and armed it's kind of a fun way to go and of course you'd have to have um, separate receptacles leads for each button and light combo so just a pretty cool thing there and um, I'm going to show another video a little later I'm going to make a field box to hold the battery and have a um, a spot for your controller to fit that's custom too, which that's another cool advantage. So feel free to um, big bar on steel with all this. Um, that's what I did. Took some ideas from others, and please post comments in uh, if you if you find something uh, that you've done is really fun. Uh, you know, adds a special uh, change to the the controller. Uh, I'd love to hear more about it and share that with others. So thanks and happy launch controller making.